Hi, uh, this is Matt Filio from Fine Art by Matt Filio. Uh, inviting you to a weekly art tip session uh, where I plan to show you some work I'm doing uh, here in the studio. Um, I'd like to show you the uh, glazing technique. And this is a technique that was used by many of the uh, old masters, including uh, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Titian, uh, Caravaggio, and even Vermeer. They used a uh, semi-translucent glazing technique where they mix their paint with a clear medium and that would give it a luminosity and a depth that's really hard to come by uh, with opaque paint. So I'd like to show you a few techniques today. Hope you enjoy. Um, please uh, share these techniques if you find them valuable. Uh, share them with your friends. Uh, and then sign up for my e-newsletter at mattfilio.com uh, where you can learn more uh, awesome techniques like this. All right, thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. So again, the painting we're going to be looking at today is called Smoldering Wick. And that is a 30 by 40 acrylic on canvas. And this is a painting I did uh, actually about myself. Um, is when I was going through a discouraging time and I found encouragement by reading the pages of the Bible and in the book of Isaiah there's a promise it says a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out and that promise speaks of Jesus who comforts us when we're discouraged and you can see that symbolized by the servant above this man you know, obviously in his expression you can tell he's really distraught and discouraged um, but his servant is encouraging him He's turning up the flame in his lamp, refilling the, the lamp with oil. And the light not only is visually appealing in this painting, but it also symbolizes uh, Jesus, who's the light of the world. And so I want to share more about the glazing technique, which is all about light and luminosity. And the part specifically uh, that I'd like to look at, uh, as this painting is still in progress, is the map. So this, this part of the painting I wanted to give a little more attention to, uh, adding a little more depth to it and clarity. So with the palette, we start with the uh, clear matte medium, and we mix a little bit of a dark brown, kind of a, a raw umber dark, and we get a little bit of medium mix into it to thin it out. And I start painting in uh, just a few patterns on this map little bit of texture work and we thin it out just a little bit as necessary. I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre, just a touch of white to lighten up the value. Uh, you can see that there. And just getting that pattern. I actually use my fingers to kind of tap it in a little bit. Um, it just uh, smooths out what you put down in the paint and I uh, that's, that's part of my technique. You know, so my fingers will get a, a little bit of paint on them at the end of the day, but uh, it's all non-toxic, so no worries. And we go back to the palette, get a little bit more color on there. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of raw sienna. And now we're working on those lines in the map. This is kind of an old world map, you know, from probably the 15 or 1600s. And we're just... Uh, I don't know, the video is blurring up a little bit. There, there we go. There we go, that's clear. And we're just adding those lines going across, how they segmented the uh, uh, latitude and longitudinal lines. There we go, I'm going back to my grade school days, trying to remember what I learned. <laughs> and you just smooth it right across. I need a little more paint. Add a little bit of raw sienna to that. And we'll go back and we're going to add a little <coughs> more medium just to thin it out. And just a bit more raw sienna. And now uh, what I want to work on is the boat. And I just want to add a little more contrast. Now you can see I had several layers down to begin with. Um, but right now I'm just going over what I already painted. And adding a little bit more. And I have to smooth it out just a little bit. Uh, sometimes you put down a bit too much paint at first. But I just love using that finger technique to dab any excess of paint that I put down. 
Um, and then we uh, just go over all the sales and we're basically following the lines we already had. Uh, sorry for the seasick uh, aspect of this video. <laughs> I'll have to get another tripod to uh, get it stabilized for future videos here, but uh, I guess it goes with the theme. Add a little more color here, um, lightening this up, and I want to go in and get the uh, windows in the boat. Just adding a little bit more depth to this painting. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And going back up into the sails a little bit. Now the beauty of the glazing technique is you don't have to match the colors perfectly right away. Because you're using layers, uh, you really can go back and forth again and again to build up the color. And that is basically what we have. Uh, for this portion here. Now I want to go in and add an overall glaze to the whole thing and darken the entire surface. Um, and I'm going to do that with a little bit of clear medium mixed with a little ochre and a little bit of my ultramarine blue with a tad of phthalo blue mixed in as well. And I scoop up that paint really nice onto that flat edge brush. And of checking to see if it's the right darkness and then I go in and just roll out that color with uh, crisscross strokes back and forth you can see how I'm just gliding it across <laughs> uh, I don't know like basting a turkey you know <laughs> you just you cover that you glaze it um, and smooth it out um, it's good to have a lot of different directions in your strokes as you're doing the glazing technique and you, what's wonderful about this is you can see the detail beneath is still preserved. Now I'll add a little more ochre. Um, I got down that dark layer, but now I'm adding a little ochre, a little um, red here, and thinning it out with medium. Tapping it into the bristles, scooping up a good amount there. A little more medium just to thin it out. And what we're going to do is take that dark glaze that I put on, and this is a little warmer in color, whereas the other was cooler. And with that thick amount that I have on my brush, I just work it right in and blend it. Um, working this warmer and lighter in value glaze um, into the darker glaze that I just put down. And that's going to give us a gradation. Now I need to go and thin it out just a hair a little more of the clear medium and we're going to thin it out just a hair so that I can then work out that last glaze into a gradation that's almost clear. And you can see this one has much more medium by ratio to the paint. So then with that clear glaze I'm going to be able to take that one step down and get more of a gradation. So from the upper right it's very dark and then going into the lower left corner, it obviously gets lighter, which then corresponds with the light that we have uh, from the lamp. I'm just going up into the top and blending it just a bit. I want to make sure that it's a pretty smooth transition. But again, isn't that just beautiful how you preserve the detail? I love that. And that's the beauty of the glazing technique. And then uh, at a little different angle where the light's not shining on it as much, you can see a little more of how the painting looks. So anyway, um, that is a quick, quick demonstration of the glazing technique. And I hope to show you a lot more in the future. Um, share with me any comments you have, any questions. Uh, this is my first video, so uh, if there's any tips on how I could improve to uh, demonstrate this technique in a more understandable way definitely let me know that and if you find these uh, tips valuable share them with your friends uh, again you can go to mattfilio.com uh, that's m-a-t-t p-h-i as in philip l-l-e-o dot com and you can sign up for more art tips personally for me delivered right to your inbox 
So anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope this helps you, and have a blessed day.